Yeah, we're going back to the show. Um, let's grab some stuff. <clears throat> I realized the last recording doesn't have my face on it. I don't know what to do about that. Um, I just, I have no idea what, what view is from this recording. Um, whatever. If you want to see my face, come across on Monday. All right. Um, we're going to take a function. And we're going to uh, see where it's increasing and decreasing. Uh, we're going to find the maxes and mins. We're going to find the curvature. We're going to find everything I can think of. Um, so, Well, um, it's, so let's start the start of easy. Um, what is the function positive? Um, well, it's a product of two things. So it's positive uh, whenever they're both positive or they're both negative. Um, e to the x is always positive. So really, it's positive whenever uh, x is so I guess that I know that um, so let's see what I know. I know that at zero, it takes the value of zero. And then it's somehow here and it's somehow here. Uh, let's see if I can make my picture better. Uh, sigma derivative. So this is a product. So I'm going to use the product rule. If you're, you know, if you're really into it, you could write it like this. And then to the quotient rule. Um, I wouldn't do that for you, but you can. Um, so I'm taking the derivative. Uh, these are not, I'm writing a prime, so I need to write the prime, otherwise they're not equal. Um, the derivative, the product rule says take the derivative of x, multiply by the function, take the function, multiply by the derivative, which means the derivative of x is one because of the power rule. The derivative of p to the x, well, I mean, I don't even think of using the power rule here. That is not x to a number. So what I get is e to the x plus x e to the x. And it seems to me like I should write it as one plus x times c to the x. Um, where is this positive? This is positive. Well, again, e to the x is always positive. So it's positive. exactly when the other factor is positive. And the other factor is positive um, whenever x is bigger than negative one. And there's a critical point at negative one. Um, so that's what I know. Um, so I guess, um, if I take 
negative one here, I know that on this side of this line, the derivative is positive. And on this side, the derivative is negative. Um, and I guess here I know that the function is positive and here the function is negative. So the derivative being negative means that f is decreasing. The derivative being positive means that f is increasing. So it's going down and then it's going up and it's going through this point, as I said uh, right before. And here the tangent is horizontal. And since I know that it goes down then up, it sure looks like a, uh, like a local minimum. The, the derivative goes from negative to positive. And the first derivative test says that this makes it a local minimum. Um, is there a, is there a global maximum? Um, is there a maximum? Um, well, no, for several reasons. If X was the maximum, we would have by what the book calls for mass theorem that the derivative is zero. But we saw the only point where the derivative is zero is x like equals negative one. We already did this. And, and this is a min. So the only way it can be both the highest and the lowest point is if it's constant, if it never goes above or below it, uh, which is not the case. So, um, there's, no, there's no global max because there's no local max even. Uh, you could even find the limit. Actually, this limit is pretty easy. Uh, because x gets large, if the x gets way larger. Um, this is just positive infinity. The limit as x approaches negative infinity um, I don't think we know how to do. We're going to learn how to do it next week, though. <clears throat> so I guess, um, well, I guess this was accurate in that it was going up. And this, I'm not sure, I guess, I mean, I, I know it's, uh, I know it's decreasing. So, and I know it's not going, it's not becoming positive at any point, but I don't really know what it, this is doing other than decreasing. What if it's going like this? This is always going down, but it's like wavy. I have no idea so far. I can figure out what this point is. F of negative one uh, is negative e to the negative one. So it's negative one over e. So I guess this is negative 0.4, more or less. Um, let's take the second derivative, see what that tells us. Oh, wait, oh, no, I want to insert is a global minimum. Is x equals negative one. Is the global minimum found at negative one? So I don't have, 
I don't have a rule for this. Um, you know, if if this was uh, a closed interval, I would have a rule. I would be like, yes, because there is a global minimum and it has to be somewhere. It's going to be here. Um, but I don't know that it has to have a global minimum. But in this particular case, so what I know is, you know, how to think of what the function looks like. Um, I know this is a global minimum because it's decreasing before before negative one. So f of x is bigger than f of negative one. And decreasing after So f of x is bigger than f of negative one. So putting these two together, um, I mean, so with decreasing, which is negative one, then increases. Uh, the answer is that it is the global minimum. All right. What can this? What can the second derivative tell us? Or you see the pattern. So I'm supposed to take the derivative of the derivative. So it's again a product. So I'm going to use the product rule. Derivative of the first and then derivative of the second. It's very similar because the derivative of x is one. Derivative of one is zero. E to the x I'm just copying. Um, x plus one I'm just copying and derivative of e to the x is itself. So what I have is the same function, but in one more e to the x. And oh, I can pull out, a, again, a common factor of e to the x. I'm left with one. So the second derivative is two plus x times e to the x. And this is positive if x is bigger than negative two. And here, f curves up and a positive f double prime is negative if x is, um, if this factor x plus two is negative, which means that x is smaller than negative two. So f curves down uh, for these values. So that, I should be able to improve my picture with that knowledge. Um, so I have oof, maybe I shouldn't look here. No, wait, it doesn't fit. Oh two. Negative one is here. Okay, so somewhere here at one over e, there's, some, there's the minimum. And here, f of, neg f of negative two is negative two e to the negative two, which um, well, e is between two and three. So it's something like negative one third, I guess. I have no idea, but it doesn't not gonna change the picture much. So what I just figured out is that up to this point, it's curving up. Um, and then after this point, it's curving down. Um, so when I take two points on the left where the, the second derivative is negative, 
the line joining them is under the curve. Or I could also say that the tangent is over the curve. And when I take two points, here the line joining them is over and the tangent is under. Um, and that makes for a pretty decent picture. Um, let's, let's use the computer and pretend I never saw this picture before. Oh, wait, no. Hold on. Here. Uh, this, here's a function. Second derivative. So negative one, I meant. A negative one, we have the minimum and the tangent is horizontal and then a negative two. So up to negative two, it's curving up. And well, it's hard to tell because it looks kind of straight, but it turns out that indeed it's curving. And the point where it stops curving up and starts curving down is exactly a negative two right here. Not here, here. And well, it should mean that if we draw the tangent line at that point, it should um, it shouldn't be on either side, it should be on both sides. And the tangent line just always has this form. You take y minus the y value, x minus the x value. This is only an approximation, this is in the exam. Um, sorry, one minus the x value, which is negative two. And then you multiply by the slope. And the slope is the derivative. And I'm not gonna write it down because it's just the computer's gonna do it for me. And there's a tangent line. And well, it's hard to tell. But because if I moved it a little bit, it's hard to tell what would happen. But it turns out that that is exactly the point where uh, the tangent switches sides from, from one side of the graph to the other. Exactly, it crosses is right here. Um, oh, by the way, let's go on inflection points. Um, the point where it changes curvature. All right. Um, that might be it. I need to go make your review worksheet. All right. Have a good weekend.